Hey, welcome to the house. My name is Wes. My wife, Vanessa, and I, we are the lead pastors here, and we want to just say welcome home. Our prayer every week is that the house would become a home for many people, and that includes you as well. And especially during this season, we also want to say Merry Christmas. We can officially say that now. I know that there's a divide for some people. They say, can you do it before Thanksgiving or December 1st or something like that? But in our house, I do want to let you know our Christmas tree was up before Halloween. Yes, that is correct. So today uh, we're going to talk uh, just for a couple moments together. Uh, and also today we are only doing our online service. We are only doing online. And so if you're wanting to show up live, uh, we'd love to see you all throughout December uh, at our four o'clock service here in Sherman Oaks. And we'll put uh, the website and up uh, down below and you can always get all of the information there. Thank you, by the way, uh, for those of you who are sharing these YouTube videos, uh, you're sharing it on Facebook, you're sharing it with friends. That helps us not only encourage more people, but with all of these different tech things, it helps also the algorithm kind of lift this video up towards the top in a lot of people's feeds. So thank you for subscribing, for liking, commenting, all of that stuff. Uh, helps us get the message out to so many other people. Um, today we're going to be talking about three ways that you can always be thankful. Three ways that you can always be thankful, or you can even think of it this way, that you can grow in your thankfulness. Three ways that you can always be thankful. Um, and we're going to be jumping out of the scripture in Philippians chapter 4, verse number 4, where Paul tells the church in Philippi, he says, hey, rejoice, celebrate, worship, extol, exclaim, just rejoice in the Lord always, always. And then he says, and again, I'm going to tell you again, rejoice. So rejoice all the time. And again, I'm going to tell you, you got to rejoice. Um, all throughout uh, the month of December, pretty much every single just streaming service, cable service, uh, any kind of TV or kind of media programming puts out uh, movies. I do want to let you know some of my top favorite movies. It just You can comment on yours in the comments. If you're on YouTube or on Facebook, you can comment. What is your top favorite, top three, top two, or even your most favorite uh, holiday movie? And I know that some people, they say Die Hard. Die Hard's a great movie. Yes, it is a Christmas movie because it takes place during Christmas uh, time. Elf is a great movie. I think Elf, it's a classic when he's hopping across, you know, the New York street and then he gets hit by a cab and, and it's just, or he's going up the escalator and he's kind of stretching his legs out like that. That is a great one. But I think God, it's got to be one of the all time top favorites in my mind is the movie Home Alone. I think Home Alone is a great movie. It's so fun. Uh, we've watched it with one of our children, but I had to kind of like put up some parameters like mom and dad would never leave you at home alone. We just need, you know, we would never forget you at home while we are off at the airport. Although that does sound exciting at sometimes. Um, but here's the thing with home alone and with kind of a lot of the Christmas moves that are out there. Uh, they start, there's a little bit of tension. Um, even if it's a Hallmark movie, you know, there's some small town that's being overrun by some big, uh, big city person. Um, there's a tension, there's this arc. And then by the end of the movie, everything lands. Everything lands. Home alone, the family all come back. It's snow is out. Uh, the neighbor with the hand and the shovel, he, he reunites, spoiler alert, reunites with his family. Uh, the thieves go to jail in the Hallmark movie. The town is saved. We did it, guys. The big sale saved the town and we renovated the theater and the kids got a new school and library books for everyone. By the end of the movie, everything comes back to normal. Everything, even if it doesn't come back to normal, it actually lands at better. So some cases they land at normal, some cases they land at better, but very few movies that are out there for the holidays land at worse. 
Very few movies land at, hey, I don't know, maybe we'll find out next Christmas. Very few movies end up with a family fighting and someone leaving and not talking for a couple of months. And so when you and I, when we watch these movies and there's a pressure because we've just talked about Thanksgiving and the message today is about being more thankful and how you can always be thankful and grow in your thankfulness. Our lives do not look like these movies. Everything doesn't always come back together on Christmas morning while it's snowing and everyone's happy to see you. Sometimes they, they descend into chaos. Sometimes there's not an answer. Sometimes there's nothing but a prayer. And so with that in mind, while we're trying to be thankful, I think a lot of times we juxtapose our thankfulness up next to this false reality of that everything is going to be good by Christmas morning. Family's coming back. Dad's coming home. Mom's coming back. Everyone's happy to see everyone. We're all hugging each other. We love each other. The family's all back together. It can put you in a very difficult spot of how can I be thankful when the McAllister family all got back together? In the movie Elf, everyone is singing, including the mean dad. And then, you know, Santa Slate gets just enough, you know, Christmas zest to go off into the world. Every Hallmark, they, they're all in that way. And you and I, we find ourselves in a world that seems nothing like that. And it's in the world that we live that Paul tells that church in Philippi, and we're going to read another scripture here in a minute out of 1 Peter, but Paul tells that church in Philippi, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say Rejoice. So I'm going to give you three tips that I think are going to be very helpful to you in how you can grow in your thankfulness, not in the perfect, you know, ending of a movie type world, but just in an everyday life that we all find ourselves in, that you may find yourself in right now. How can you grow in thankfulness right now? Before there's an answer, before there's a hug, before there's a check, how can you grow in thankfulness and I'm going to tell you, number one, uh, if you're writing things down, you could write this down. You could text it to you, a friend. You could write it in the notes below, but you could uh, write this phrase out. Make a thankfulness list. Make a list of all of the things that you are thankful for. You can write them down. You can think about it. But writing it down helps you see it because Paul says, be thankful. You know, he, he talks about rejoicing in the Lord. And then he says, always. So today... Despite the fact that you may feel chaos around you, you can write a list out of things that you are thankful for. Now, I do want you to know some of those things might be external. Some of them might be just more in theory. Some of them might just be just things that are in your heart. Um, if you were to ask a kid, you know, if you ask him uh, every, you know, Thanksgiving dinner growing up, I remember, uh, especially if we were uh, with my dad's side of the family, my grandmother, when she was still with us, she would make us all go around. Come on, some of you guys, you just did this a couple days ago. She would, we would all go around, we'd hold hands, and we'd have to all go around. All right, tell grandma what you're thankful for. Nice and loud. You're like, uh, and you have to say, I'm thankful for my family. And you know you just got in a fight with them five minutes before that. Come on, grandma heard you, Jesus heard you, and you're just lying in front of everybody. I'm thankful for my family that I just got in a fight with. But we all kind of go around, uh, and we, the, the group is saying, here is what we are thankful for. Now, when someone is younger, they will tend to focus on things that are external. Toys that they have, games that they have, maybe friends and family, maybe. Now, I'm not going to say that those things are bad to be thankful for, because actually I think it's okay to be thankful for the stuff that you have. It's okay to say, hey, you know what? I'm actually thankful for these blessings that God has brought my way. I'm thankful that this has happened, but that is not the only thing to be thankful for. Having more does not mean more thankfulness. I think we have convinced ourselves that if I had more, I would be more thankful. Have you ever done this? Have you ever gotten a, gotten a new car? Right now, just I'm looking at just some cars and I'm praying. I'm like, Lord, I'm so thankful for the Prius that you gave me. I'm th I, Lord, thank you. 
thank you for the Prius and the million miles per gallon, you know, the gas mileage. God, I'm so thankful. But have you ever prayed you got something and then like a month later, it just kind of, the, the, the veneer of it kind of wore off, the shininess of it wore off. Like the first day that you wore the brand new shoes, you kind of walked like stiff and you didn't want to get the crease in the toes and, and you hopped over puddles. But a month later, you're just mowing the lawn in them and they're just another pair of Air Force ones that you're mowing the lawn in. They're just another pair of shoes that you wear out on the street. You're like, I don't even care. I'll run a race in them. I'll kind of kneel down. I'll get all the creases in them. I don't care because the veneer has worn off. It's okay to be thankful for things. It's okay to be thankful for those things. But having more does not mean more thankfulness. If you've ever lost something, if you ever lost something, I'm not just talking about money, but or, or, or different items or things. How about this? Have you ever lost your voice? Am I the only one that said, like, have you ever lost your voice and, and you can't speak? And it's something that you're so used to always having. You're used to always having it. And then when it's gone and it comes back, you're going, oh, thank God. Or have you ever had a cold or a flu? Or maybe someone that you love is sick. And then they come back and you're like, oh, it's so good to finally be healthy again. See, we can be thankful for things, but there are other things that we can be thankful for that are not things like health and friendships and family and the city that you live in. So you don't have to wait to remember a minute ago said, hey, more things doesn't mean more thankfulness. But if, you, if you're waiting for you to have a house before you're thankful, then the moment that you get that house, you'll say, well, when I get a, a bigger house, when I get a second house, why not be thankful right where I, just, God, thank you for this studio apartment. Thank you for this one bedroom. Thank you for this two bedroom. Thank you that, that I've got a carport, a place to park the Prius. God, thank you for the, that I have a street to park the car on. Thank you, God, that I've got a bus that I can ride to work every day. Thank you that I've got a job. Be thankful for the things that you have right now. So number one, write out a list of the things that you're thankful for. Number two, this one may catch you a little bit off guard. Write out a list of the things that you're thankful that you don't have. Write out a list of the things that you're thankful that you don't have. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 3, Peter says this. He says, God has given us everything that we need for living a godly life. Everything that you need to live out the godly life that God has called you to live, everything that you need to live that life, you already have it. Everything that you need to live the life that God has called you to live, you have been given by God, your creator. No one can take that away. No one can take Jesus away from you. No one can take away the love of God from you. No one can take away the power of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit away from you. No one else can take away this. So Peter's reminding people, he's saying, everything that you need to live the godly life that God has for you, you have in the person of Christ Jesus. Everything that you need, you've already been given. So the things that you don't have, you can thank God for those things. You can thank God that you no longer had that toxic relationship that was holding you back. You can write a list. Thank God that this relationship does not exist anymore because it was pulling me away from my destiny in God. How about, you know, you're, you're, maybe your car broke down. You say, you know what, God, I'm thankful that I no longer have that car because now I get to rely on your faithfulness. Now I get to just rely on your goodness. Now I get to evangelize the people on the bus. The devil is going to pay because every Uber and Lyft, every bus that I get on, every walk that I go on, I'm going to witness to people about Jesus. God, thank you that I no longer have those things that are holding me back. How about thankful for those friends Friends that you had that walked out of your life in a difficult moment. I met up with someone recently and they said that they're going through a very difficult time in their life. And it was at that moment that they went to go look to their friends for help and their friends were nowhere to be found. 
Now, we've all experienced this, and we are all human, and Jesus and the, the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they're the only ones who are perfect. Let me just say that right now. No church, no humans are perfect, but in those moments where you really need a friend, and a friend is not there, and they leave your life, you can actually, in the, minute, in the, in the moment of that pain, you can actually thank God, say, God, thank you that the friends I have right now are the friends that I need. I thought that I needed those friendships in my life, and it's painful to see them go. But I'm thankful that in this moment of pressure, you have shown me who's really got my back. I'm thankful in this moment of tension, you've shown me who the people who are my real friends. Everything that you need to live out the godly life that God has for you, you already have. No one can take that away from you. No one can take that away from you. You can ask yourself, maybe if I don't have fill in the blank, maybe I don't need it. That thing that you've been praying for, that relationship that you've been praying for, that advancement in your career, that, that leveling up in life or whatever it is, those, those things that you're praying for, maybe that thing that you are praying for, you can thank God that it hasn't happened yet. Because maybe there's something on the other side that you don't know. See, we can thank God for the things that we have, but we can also thank God for the things that we no longer have. Maybe that job that you got let go from, maybe actually that environment got increasingly more toxic. And you're looking back going, God, I wish I was there. I wish I could be in that environment. And God's like, no, it's a toxic cesspool. You know, I had to get you out in that moment. You're like, oh, it was so painful. It's like, you want painful, as painful as in that environment right now. You can be thankful for the things that you don't have. And then number three, here's where we're going to end. You can always be thankful for Jesus. You can always be thankful for Jesus. All too often, we are thankful for what we have instead of being thankful for who has us. Let me say that again. All too often, we are thankful for what we have, what we can hold, but we forget that we can be thankful for who holds us, who has us. I think if, if you were to write a list and you were to put on that list three different things, number one, God, here are the things I'm thankful for. I'm thankful that you've given me these friendships. You've given me these relationships. God, I'm thankful for these things. And then the second thing on that list you would write, God, I'm thankful that I no longer have these things. I don't understand how. I don't understand why. And in some cases, I miss these things or these people or these just these situations. But you can say, God, I'm thankful because I trust you in the middle of that. And then finally, God, I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for his love. I'm thankful for his forgiveness. I'm thankful for his kindness. I'm thankful for the comfort of the Holy Spirit. Jesus, when no one else was there, you were there. Jesus, I'm thankful that you died on the cross, but that you also rose again. I'm thankful for the power of God. I'm thankful for the healing miracles, not only in the Bible, but in the world today and in my life. God, I'm thankful for your church. God, I'm thankful for the body of Christ. I'm thankful that when I take communion, Jesus, you're right there in the midst of us. I'm thankful, God, that when I worship you, that you inhabit the praises. You come and you live in the praises of your people. God, I'm thankful that you still baptize people afresh with the Holy Spirit. God, I'm, th I'm thankful, God, that you still place the lonely in families. God, I'm thankful for the Great Commission, that I'm a part of the family of God and I'm a part of the army of God. God, I'm thankful that my life has a purpose in you. You, not because I've got a dream or a vision or a passion, but because Jesus, you have a dream and a vision and a passion for me. Jesus, I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful, God, that you came and you humbled yourself and you took on the form of a servant. Yeah, and you, you, you went through the cross and you looked through that and you saw me. Jesus, I am thankful for you. I promise you, if you do these three things of here's what I'm thankful that I have, here's what I'm thankful that I don't have, and Jesus, I'm always thankful for you. I promise you this, if you practice this, and this becomes part of your daily ritual, your daily habit of here's what I'm thankful for, here's what I'm thankful that I don't have, and here's why I'm thankful for Jesus, I promise you this, your gratitude levels will go up. Your thankfulness levels will grow. Gratitude and thankfulness looks good on everyone. 
And so as we go into this Christmas season, it's right around the corner here. As we go into this Christmas season, we can be those people that even if our life doesn't look like Home Alone, even if our life doesn't look like Hallmark and it kind of feels like the middle of Die Hard, even if our life is just kind of scattered and all over the place, we can still be thankful. We can still write a list of here's what I'm thankful for, that I have, here's what I'm thankful that I no longer have, and why I'm always thankful for Jesus. Make it a part of your morning routine. Put it on a list. Put it on a sticky note. Put it on the mirror in your bathroom. Write it on the mirror. Let your roommates see it as well. Here's what I'm thankful for, and here's what I'm thankful that my roommates are leaving. I'm just kidding. But you can write it on the mirror. You can put it someplace that you're going to see it often and remind yourself. Say it out loud. I am thankful that I have this. I'm thankful that this is no longer a part of my life, and I'm thankful for Jesus. Let me pray as we close today. Jesus, I thank you for all of my friends today. I thank you, God, that you love them and you are for them. I thank you, God, that people are going to grow in gratitude, especially I'm going to pray for people who are struggling with anxiety or depression in this time, in this season, that you would be with them, Jesus. God, that you would lift them up in this moment. I, I do pray, God, that you would answer their prayers. I do pray, God, that people without families and connections, that they would feel a part of the family of God. And Jesus, that we here at the house, that we would be a really good representation of what true kingdom family looks like. I pray, God, your blessing over every single person. I also want to pray for a group of people right now. Maybe you're watching this today and you're saying, hey, pastor, I want to, I want to grow in my relationship with Jesus. I'm going to invite you to go to thehousela.org and click on the button that says next steps. And we want to help you grow in your relationship with God. We want to help you grow forward in your relationship with God. But I'm going to pray for you right now. If that's you and you're saying, hey, I want to grow in my relationship with God. I want to start my relationship, God. I want to move forward. Whoever that is, just put your hand in your heart. Maybe even you can raise your hand towards heaven. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Jesus, I'm praying for every single person. Their hands on their heart. Hand is lifted. I'm praying, God, that you're going to help them as they move forward, as they progress in their relationship with you. That heaven would not be some ethereal, far-off place, but it would literally be, and that they would experience heaven on earth. I pray that, that they would grow in following Jesus starting today. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen. Hey, thank you so much for being a part of today's service. Again, if you have not liked or subscribed uh, to our YouTube channel, please do that. We want to make sure as we get out some of these special videos that you are a part of that. Um, before we end today, I also want to thank you so much for your incredible generosity. Who we are as a church, it's really down to two big things. Number one, it's God's blessing, but also it's your help. God's blessing and your help. And in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 11, verse 24, in the message translation, it says this, that the world of the generous, it gets broader and broader. And that's the kind of people that we want to be. And that's the kind of church that we want to be as we, as we not only do serve week projects and, and serve children, 30 different kids in the foster care system over this last month that we've been able to bless and serve and bring gifts to them and just and write them letters saying, hey, we love you as a church. We are for you. God loves you. But also 200 kids in Guadalajara, Mexico, that we were able to encourage, bless, write notes, and then also encourage and bless their pastors as well. I want to say thank you so much for your continued tithes and offerings as not only as you honor God with that, but also as you hear from the Holy Spirit. I've heard so many stories recently where the Holy Spirit speaks to someone about giving a gift. And I just, I just want you to know, I feel like that is a gift that is on our church, that God's blessing comes and then we hear from heaven and we say, God, what do you want me to do with it? And so can I just say thank you so much for your continual just trust in God in giving not only tithes and offerings, but also in as we do these projects and as stuff gets elevated and we say, hey, we should do something about this. I just wanna say thank you so much. And let's not stop. Let's be those people who are prepared to always respond to the voice of God as heaven shouts down, hey, let's do something here or let's do something there. Let's be those first ones that are in those tense moments. We don't run away, but actually we run towards it. We say, all right, Jesus, what are you going to do through us in this situation. And together, I believe that we will be a part of miracles together. You just watch as you trust God with your tithes and offerings, 
And as you trust the Holy Spirit, as God is just telling you, hey, bless this or do something here with this person, you just watch that the Lord will continue to open up the windows of heaven over your life as well. Hey, next month we're starting up a brand new series all December long called The Magic of Christmas. We'd love to see you uh, whether online or in person, but if you're in LA, can I just encourage you, make it a point. Make it a point to come to an in-person service, four o'clock in Sherman Oaks at 4445 Noble Avenue every Sunday night at four o'clock. We love you, God bless, and we'll see you back next week here at the house.